Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review we are looking at the Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy Drax the Destroyer aka that wrestler guy. Uh, it looks a lot like the wrestler guy so I guess they did a good job with the sculpt. It looks a little broad in the face maybe but I don't know it looks pretty accurate to me. I'm not into wrestling in any way you guys know that so I'm not the best judge of the likeness but it looks pretty darn good to me so it's, it's probably pretty good. This guy has quite an impressive sculpt, for the most part. Almost all of the tattoos are sculpted. The paint doesn't necessarily line up with every little detail, but it does for the most part, and you can't really tell unless you're going to go through and feel each one with your fingernail if it lines up quite right or not, so it looks like it does, and that's fine by me. So, they did a good job, the coloring looks good. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the movie design of Drax, but as far as the figure goes, they pretty much nailed it, so that's a good thing. He stands about six and three quarter inches tall, so he's a little bit taller, so that's good. He's definitely bulkier. The body does remind me of the Hyperion mold. It is better though. The only problem I have, the only real problem I have with this entire figure, is that they still have the neck behind the shoulders. That looks odd. It's not quite right. This one's not so far off. It's not that bad at all. Some of the figures have the shoulders really far forward, but it, it does look a little bit off the way they don't give any meat at all to the back and bring the shoulders back where they should. That's odd to me. But this, like I said, this guy is barely even noticeable. It's not nearly as bad as Hyperion, so that's a good thing. Uh, the face sculpt, whether it looks like him or not, that's up to you. I think it does, but the face sculpt itself is a really good sculpt. The paints are good on it. The articulation for the head, standard ball peg on a hinge, so that's good. The location of the ball peg on the head provides for good articulation, good natural movement, so that's really good. We have the ball hinge shoulders, pretty good range of motion, pretty natural looking from the front. They didn't place them too far out or too far in, so that's pretty good. We have a bicep swivel. Biceps are a bit small. They've been doing that a lot on the Legends lately. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, they just don't give them any any bicep really so that's a little strange to me too but the arms are still thick it just doesn't have the right kind of shape so whatever it's not bad we have double jointed elbow pretty limited well you get about a 45 so it's not as much as I would like out of a double joint but for a thicker figure it's not so bad at all we have a wrist swivel and a wrist hinge and he has the gripping hands on both sides for his knives which are really soft plastic but I don't think there's going to be too much of a problem. They're sculpted well, painted well enough, they're pretty shiny, so that's cool. And then he can hold them well, which is always important. I'm assuming they go this way based on the way the blade looks, but the way that little bit of the uh, handle is, they might go this way. I don't think so though. I think they go this way, because that's how the handle's curved also. But he holds them, and that's what's important. So. You won't have any trouble posing this guy holding his knives because he can actually hold them. Which, as we'll see in the Gamora review, apparently isn't a standard for Hasbro anymore. Accessories? They don't need to hold them. That's okay. But he does, so that's good. Ab crunch works pretty fine. It clicks forward, clicks back, looks natural. They sculpt it all the way up, so that's a big bonus. You can see the abs are sculpted in there. Some people are getting the torso turned around, I guess. The lower torso. Uh, I guess I got lucky, because mine is not backwards, so that's good. Waist twist. This belt piece is actually a separate piece glued on. Not sure why, but it is. Doesn't really matter, though. Waist is above the belt. The hips come all the way forward, a little bit back, almost completely to the side. And on a big, bulky figure, that's pretty impressive. So they did a really good job with that. We have a thigh swivel, which is good. The pants are also sculpted really well. Not any paint on there, but they're sculpted well. We have double jointed knees, which gives us a good range of motion. And then we have the now standard ankle pivot and ankle rocker combination. So that's pretty good, and the feet do go forward a little bit. So again, that's pretty good. The feet themselves don't have the best shape. They look a little pillowy. I don't know, there, there's not like a really good boot shape to them, but that might be how it is in the movie, so I'm not going to complain about that yet. We do have the buckles painted, and we do have the belt painted, and they definitely painted the torso appropriately, even though there's no shading. So, you know, it's not the most amazing figure ever, but it's definitely an okay figure for me. 
I'm quite happy to have it and they did a fairly good job on it. So good job Hasbro on this figure. I wish the other ones were as good as this one. Uh, also he's not, he's made out of the same plastic it seems as the soft ones, but being that he's bulkier it's not nearly as bad. You really only see it in the elbow joint itself. So I'm okay with it and uh, he might be the best out of the whole bunch. He's really nice looking. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.